Hello, I'm Jesse Weiler here with Sister Maria Laudem Gloria, who is the direct executive director of Our Ladies Montessori School in Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas Sister, how are you doing, are you doing today? I'm doing well, um, thanks. Thanks I'm so excited, excited for our today. We were we were discussing some of the work that you were doing, and I was like, "Oh, can we talk about Catechesis of the Good Shepherd?" And you said, "Absolutely, You're very kind." So, um, before we okay. join in our conversation, would you mind lead, leading us in? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence, giving you thanks and praise for all of the gifts and blessings you bestow upon us. We ask you in a special way, we give you thanks for the gift of your son, Jesus. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon this time together, enliven our hearts and, and make us especially attuned to doing your holy will and all that we say and do. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, pray for us. Pray for us. So, so sister, are part of the the Society of Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, and we always like to find out a little bit about your story and how you came to be a part of this community. Uh, what was what was you know the pivotal moment in your life that you said, "Oh wow, this might might be something that uh, I'm able to do to 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 enter this life." Yeah. Um, well, religious life really wasn't on my radar. I didn't grow up with um, being surrounded by a lot of sisters, and so. It wasn't until I was in college, and uh, it was pretty neat. Um, I was surrounded by a really great group of um, Catholic friends and uh, just growing in my faith. And um, one of my friends who had moved away, she ended up calling me up in the middle of the summer and saying, do you want to go on a road trip across the country? And we're going to go stop at a bunch of convents on the way. She was discerning a religious vocation. And so I couldn't think of a reason not to go. <laughs> So, and it sounded kind of fun to go is travel. That a a nun, is that a and nun? So we is went that what people, people call a nun? All right, all right. That is yeah. what they call just, it. Just want to make sure. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. Anyway, so we ended up on this trip, and we visited several different communities. But there was one particular community that I just really, there was a moment at where I just really felt like the Lord was asking me to, like, would you consider this, this uh, life with me, you know, in this way? And so it was just kind of this open door. And so, um, and then from there, I just feel like my life changed. So um, it just kind of this whole process, it was such a process of like the Lord opening my heart and then just really like, what does it mean to be religious? Like, and I really desired, like, I wanted to make sure I was convicted that this is what God wanted me to do. And so um, the journey went on and um, I was just about ready to graduate. And so I ended up doing a year of missionary work with our salt community in Belize. And I just kind of took a break from what my path was, like what I was, um, my plans. And I just kind of gave space for the Lord. And it was such a blessing. It, and just there's so many graces in that time that really kind of brought this conviction of of, yeah, I, the Lord is really calling me to something more. And like, what does that mean? And am I ready to really give myself away like that? And so, yeah, it was, um, there were several moments along the way, um, but it was really that, that nun run, that kind of moment with our Lord at this one, this beautiful community in, in Tennessee. And um, so, yeah, it was, that was probably the moment where I really I gotta felt ask, the Lord. Did your friend end up becoming a religious or was that God's plan to like tag you tag along and then you you know you're the we came through. yeah well that's the funny thing I you know God's providence is so mysterious because I was not discerning and she very much was and then she's married <laughs> now and has several kids and is very happy and then here I, I am. had a I had <laughs> a suspicion so. that that was the case so that's why I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to know and uh, uh so that's fantastic yeah. to to be a wit witness to that um, um now, I think I think what will get confused confused in the discernment process is that that clarity and that you know oh this is definitive right this is what I'm supposed to do so what you know you 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 had a gradual increase involvement with this this community what was what made it so so definitive like yeah yes yeah 
I think that's a great question. And, and you know, I ended up, um, so I served for a year in Belize and I, I was just so on fire. My, the relationships were wonderful and like everything was just clicking and I felt like I was just getting started there. And, um, the second year I went back for a second year and that second year was um, a really challenging year. Like I didn't have those close, um, friendship connections with the, the other volunteers. And I, as much as I did the previous year. And um, there was a lot of just real challenges that were really, the Lord is really stretching me. And um, there was just kind of this this invitation, you know, like I really, um, I would pray the liturgy of the hours. I, I would go to mass, there's adoration. And like, I had a really good spiritual director with like the community that we were, that I'm in. And um, just that support and that that desire that even through the cross, like, um, he's still like wanting me in this, um, total way, you know? And so it was just a process of purification and, and just this, this real conviction. And, and there's a gift from the Lord really, um, that, that real conviction. What are so, the specific charisms that you felt like you were able, able to connect with this specific community? I mean, I, I have to admit that that's where of that inspired, inspired when you had your first visit. Yeah, no, so the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, so we've had a mission there in Belize for a really long time. Like our co-founder, he started the mission down there. It was this beautiful missionary witness. Um, but I really think that um, our, our community, it's not, we're kind of, it's not what we do, it's more how we do it, um, how we serve. We serve on what we call ecclesial family teams. So like teams of priests, sisters, and laity, like offering the gift of their vocation and like serving the people in greatest need. And so when I was in Belize, like I had these, like we would eat lunch with the priests and the sisters and, and we would, um, you know, there's just so many opportunities just to be in relationship with, with them and with the other volunteers and the laity there. And there was just kind of this, um, like potency almost like in this relationship and this family, you know? And so I really think that, is kind of what I kept coming back to of like, there is something like there's a real powerful gift in this, this uh, spirituality of communion, you know? And so I think I was pretty well known with the sisters. I would, I would knock on their door and I'd say, can I help you do anything? <laughs> I was there almost every Saturday. And so I was kind of the, the volunteer that was around a lot, but I think it was through the, 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 re, the relationships um, um, in that spirituality of communion, I think. That drew me in. So um, this this might be a you know very general question that you you have to answer a lot, but I'm very curious as to, to the relationship between Mary and the Most Holy Trinity, right? And I think there's this this common mm -hmm. thing with you know, you know religious communities and, and we just Mary and, and then some, you know you know church or something thing. But what is that connection? Because most of us think Mary and Christ, and you know that that's the most dynamic relationship there, but. We don't often hear about Mary and God the Father, or necessarily the Holy, the Holy Spirit. What is that like, and why? And why is that big theme, you know, for community? Yeah, you know, I think it really comes from. Um, I mean, I think there's a real inspiration in the in the Vatican II Council. I think there is in Lumen Gentium it talks about Our Lady and as the daughter of the Father and the mother and disciple of the Son and the spouse and temple of the Holy Spirit. And so I think within our community, we really strive to look to our Blessed Mother and, and how she relates to the Father as a beloved daughter, you know, and and that like animated joy of being a spouse of the Spirit and like the different nuances and the um, uniqueness of the individual relationships, I think it, it helps us in our relationship with one another and the people that we serve because everybody's so different. And so there's such a fullness in those um, Mary and Trinitarian relationships. That, that's so. great. That was much, much better than I was expecting because I had no expectations <laughs> for you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, um, that, that, is, is, that is remarkable because like I, like I said, I mean, a lot of times we know stand and familial relationship, mother or son. Or son. And we don't get access to that, but I think there's so much more wealth of knowledge there uh, that can help us as well. So that's great. Um, I'm going to dive in, into our, our talk today because there's, there's so much to talk about. Uh, um, but before we can really be talk specifically, specifically about pieces of the Good Shepherd, Shepherd, we do need to need to talk about a Montessori school and and what that means in terms of a learning modality. So, what is a Montessori school? 
and uh, how does that actually play out, you know, you know, for your, your work there? there? Yeah, I know that's a great question. And so um, Our Ladies Montessori School is the name of our, our Catholic Montessori School here in Kansas City. And um, I, I've been here for about four years now. I've been the, the director there for four years. And I'm just, I'm just blown away every day by something new about this combination between Catholic and Montessori. Um, but what I think is so powerful about Montessori is that we're really looking at the child on an individual level. And we're saying, like, what are the needs of this child in front of me? And so, like, first of all, like, the role of the teacher looks very different in a Montessori classroom than in another school. Because uh, Maria Montessori said that if you're looking at a Montessori classroom, you sh it should be, you'd have to look for that teacher. You wouldn't be able to say, oh, there's the teacher. Like, she should kind of be hidden in the background because she's she's constantly, like, facilitating this um encounter of learning, basically. And so that's one thing. I would say another um, um, principle or characteristic would be like the independence of the child and a real deep um, interior motivation to learn. So they're like, they, they're discovering, they're exploring, they're, they're taking in the world around them and how God is like engaging them in all aspects of their learning and just letting it come alive. So I just think it's, um, it really makes me think of our Blessed Mother as far as like how she was just this great observer, you know, and so she was always looking for that moment that the Lord would come or, you know, the grace would develop. So it's just, it's powerful. And, and to really see the joy that comes forth from the children when they can discover something and then they claim it and then they, they carry it with them forever. So I think that's really um, a powerful element of the Montessori environment. There's lots of them, but those are just the ones that come to mind right away. I, I so. love it because we talk a lot about wonder and awe, and, and we can be told that something is wonderful and awesome, or we, we can discover that something and thing is wonderful and awesome, and obvi obviously, you know, Lord God, God and, and all, all the, the, you know, you know beautiful that come from that, and I think that's great. How does that, you know, create a great you know, fertile ground for something like, like Catechism of Good Shepherd. Yeah. So I really think that like seeing in a child, if, if from a very young age, so like the age of three is when the monastery program starts, like there's like a receptivity that's nurtured. Like, like what is it that's going inside this child? Like it's not me that's giving it. Something's already happening. You know, the Holy Spirit's moving. And so when they're getting used to like being able to stay with, a work that interests them for a long time until they're finished. Like it's really this, the seed ground for like contemplation of like, okay, it's going to take time for the Lord's going to like maybe make himself known in a way that I can perceive it. Like, so like hang in there, you know? So to be able to, to watch a three-year-old sit with a work for, for 30 to 40 minutes, I think people are just astonished that that's even possible, but it's that same concept that, um, when it's brought into the light of, of faith that like it's, it's something again, that's coming from within that we're just kind of drawing out and letting happen and, and kind of gently facilitating and um, seeing what happens. So, and I don't know if that kind of answers part of that question, but um, it's really a quite um, the, watching it happen is, is a wonder mm -hmm. in itself, you know, <laughs> like, to see things click and click in a very mm -hmm. deep way. And, and, and if we, and look, you know, you know, sacramentally, you know, the sac sacraments are, uh, uh, you know, especially, especially it's the liturgy for, for to both praise God, but then be sanctified and sanctify mankind, right? And so that's a very, you know, high level thing that ch children may not understand. But, but when we're talking about, let's say something about, you know, you know sacramental awareness, Catechesis of the Good, the Good Shepherd really sets it up, set up. So, so there's some way, ways in which these children are organically discovering the connection between the sacramental reality and the earthly reality that they're experiencing. Yeah, I think, so the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, so uh, just one little caveat is that um, it's, it's based in Montessori principles, and it was uh, put together by this Hebrew scholar and this Montessori and this teacher that was trained in the Montessori and they bring it together. But how they developed it, it was rooted in scripture and it was rooted in the liturgy. So those are like the two pillars of catechesis. And so when you 
you, um, so a typical like presentation or like a little in interaction with the child in the, what we call the atrium where the catechesis happens, it's, um, you might, it might look like physical materials before the child. And then you're reading scripture and it's drawing them into that scripture for that living encounter to happen. But you have the scripture coming alive in that way. But then you also have like um, from a very young age, they're learning the nomenclature for the part, like the pieces, the, the vessels and the altar and the ambo and, and the things that they're seeing in mass. And so they're, they're having these like tactile interactions from a very young age, from a young age, that's engaging them to participate when they go to mass. Then they can say, oh, father's wearing green today. It's ordinary time. Like, and they know what that means. So it's kind of like this um, open door. And then as you go on and get older um, and you start introducing that reasoning mind, um, you, you're building the reasoning mind on a relationship that they have been nurturing since they've been three. So it's, um, but it's very rooted in scripture and in the liturgy. All of the works are in one way or another connected to those. You know, we as church are hearing a lot of things right now about, you know, people who believe or do not, do not believe in the presence uh, Eucharist, and now now we have you know the year of the year of the Eucharist, diocese, diocese, and Eucharistic you know revivals and renewals and things like that. Uh, but then we're also seeing a lot of people leave the church. You know they they, they maybe they have received all the sacrament, but then they end up up leaving. Uh, it's it's my understanding that having an experiential learning learning process like catechesis, catechesis of the good church could help could help enhance the activity, you know, sacramental preparation. So in your experience, how do those, uh, how does what you teach or what they learn rather, you know, hold true beyond, you know, the, their, their first experience with this, with the sacrament? Yeah. You know, I think, um, I mean, when, in working with children in general, like you're just fostering this seed, you know, you're planting these seeds and then you're letting the Lord develop them but um i think kind of that um yeah i think uh as far as like what's going on like it's all about that living encounter with our lord you know and so if there's a way that like i said like if they can discover who jesus is and connect that with the mass like if they can discover that and they can claim it it's like it becomes a part of them you know and it's not just like intellectual knowledge it's like a soul knowledge like and so I think just as you watch the children like have these like encounters with the Lord and like watching them develop as they get older I mean it's it's beautiful because the connections to the mass just deepen as they get older because even at the older level of like let's say a, a third or a fourth grade they're like reading the prayers from the sacrament or from the the missile and they're they're writing them down in like beautiful writing and like they're internalizing what they're, they're, they're writing so that when they come to mass and they hear those words of consecration and the prayers that lead up to it, like they're just more disposed to receive it. Um, but yeah, I think just based on that living encounter with the Lord, that's the seed that we want to plant and so that it can flower. So you talk about Montessori being a more individualized, you know, learning environment for these children. So I'm very curious about the diversity of, of encounter, right? So, so uh, you know, you know, maybe writing things, scripture, in the Psalms, Psalms is that principal and pull encounter from kid, and maybe you know, brilliant vestments and you know, sacred beauty is another encounter for another kid. So, uh, my my, my two part question is: what, what can you you know tell tell me about diversity of of encounters you're seeing with kids, and is there mm -hmm. one that tends to pop more where you see this a lot. This is something specifically that really hits with the children. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a really great question. As far as like what, what really hits with the children, I'm always really amazed because um, every child is a little bit different, but the way that the, the materials in the atrium from like all levels, basically how they came about was that, so Gianna uh, Gobi and, Sophia Cavaletti, the founders of Catechesis of Good Shepherd, they like would take a scripture or they would take like a work from the mass and they would develop it. And then they would like test it over and over and over again and just look for patterns, you know, like see what is the, what are children drawn to at this age? You know, and so when you have like this 
like almost like tried and true, like this evolving, like testing process of these materials, like you have a pretty good, um, like guess on where that, what will draw the children. And from there, I think then it goes from the individual child. But what I've noticed is that, and what I've heard our other sisters and the catechists say is that they're so often drawn to these works that are, are steeped in the kerygma. So you have like the last supper narrative, like where Jesus is like giving us his body and blood. Like I, I had an atrium class and every day it was either the, it was either the Seneca work, the last supper work. It was the altar work. They like, like the, the three to six year olds, they were like constantly there. Like they were wanting to manipulate what they were seeing at mass and the good shepherd, the good shepherd uh, parable, of the good shepherd, like, and when you think about it, like those are really the essence, you know, like this, this personal relationship with our Lord you have comes through in the mass. And like, so those um, essentials are just so like, um, yeah, it's neat to see how they so commonly are drawn to those, those core truths of our faith. What, what about the difference be between young men and, and the young men? Are you seeing a difference in the way they encounter the priesthood? Because you talk about you know, the supper and the altar. And I'm curious as to how they both digest that type of information. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you know, I haven't really had a chance to think about that too much. Um, yeah, the difference between the, the little boys and the little girls. Um, I mean, I think that the work, um, I haven't worked directly with like, let's say the elementary age. I've, I have worked directly with um, the three to six year olds. And I do just see this like can draw to the mass in general, um, you know, the altar work and, and just watching what like through the works in the math or works in the atrium, they're able to like really watch what's happening at mass. Um, but I guess I haven't firsthand seen a difference of like, well, the, the girls are more drawn to this than the boys, but other catechists may may have a different. I, I only ask, ask that because I have, you know, six year old and then a five year old, and to me, me, I, I see them being drawn and processing in totally different ways. And you know, maybe that's an age yeah. thing, maybe it's an individual identity thing. But I'm, as a parent, I'm trying to foster that and to encourage them in that in that direction. So, you know, somebody who who are not in a Montessori school, you know, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't a lot about this stuff. What are some things that I can do that I can pick up, you know, what they say, and I can, I can run with that and give them the space to, you know, discover? You, you, know, you know, I don't foresee us being a Montessori school, school and we have a very good, very good yeah. school, uh, but, but what can I do, can I do to, to add to that for them? Yeah, you know, I think that's a great question. And kind of as you were talking, it made me kind of think about um, like when I was trained in um, I was trained in the three to six year old um, atrium. And, and I think it's true across the board. Um, but the whole approach is kind of grounded in like, like just listening, like what is going on in, in their mind? Like, what are they like? What are they seeing? You know, like um, and just asking those questions like. Like they say, well, well, why does this happen? You know, or like, why does Jesus do this? Like, and just to kind of just take a breath and just say, wow, I wonder, you know, and kind of just give space for the Holy Spirit to kind of develop what he's already started, you know? And I think, I mean, for myself personally, I'm constantly saying like, you know, I'm kind of wanting to like answer the question right away, you know, or like kind of just, um, just provide the answer. But in a lot of times, especially like when we're talking about maybe like, what did you hear at mass today? Or like, you know, just to kind of like kind of ask those open ended questions of like, just kind of like, I wonder what that like, what struck you, you know, or like, um, what did you hear? That was kind of a, a big thing. Like when we're reading the scriptures, we'll read a scripture or maybe you're at mass and you're you hear the reading and afterwards you say like, well, what did you hear? Like, because we all hear something different, different things stand out. You know, we know that through Lexio Divina. But um I would say just kind of just give yourself the permission to just pause a little bit and just ask that, like, well, I wonder why that, like, like why Jesus said that. And then maybe give a little bit of what you know, but um, not to always feel like you have to answer all those questions right away. I need to be better about that. Now that I, see, I, I hear you talking about that and you're right. Like, that's my you know, inclination to just say, oh, that's that's this, you know, but 
I think that's a very important, important lesson I, I need to, to learn as a parent. Um, last question, kind of, you know, going going on those same lines of uh, uh, we're just talking about, talking about, I'm wondering about how the children are able to take, you know, these mystical things and an understanding of, you know, this high level theology and processing that. And how does that lead lead into their everyday life? Are you seeing that they're that they're able to take take these thoughts, ideas, formula, formula discoveries, and be able to use those as, as foundations in their everyday life and and how they live? Yeah, you know, I think I mean I think so. Like I think um, I think even like whether it's like in the atrium, they're just learning to like um, like wait on the Lord. You know, like to just um, see where the Lord leads them and to like really have the time and space to encounter him, you know, like how that, like, like the Lord isn't trying to engage us at all times, you know? And I think as adults, we know that. And so it's this constant, like, like work of our life that we're trying to like receive the graces he's giving us in all moments. And so I think like Kakis is a good shepherd, um, whether you're involved in that or if it's a Montessori classroom or even just like, like, fostering that wonder in the child, you know, like you're, you're walking on the beach, let's say you're going swimming and you're like, wow, look at those shells. Like, like, I wonder, I wonder why God made those or like how things like, just how did it, what was God thinking in these moments, you know, and just kind of fostering that in children from a young age or just in general of that discovery. Like, I think that kind of, bridges the gap of like, we're, we're taking what we're learning, these deep mystical, you know, having these living encounters with God in scripture and in the mass, but he's encountering us all the time, you know, and he's, he's offering these encounters all the time. So I think that kind of daily life, I think that's a skill that or practice. We need to practice our entire lives. Yeah. I think that that's, that's, that can be difficult when, when, you know, especially younger children, children, they, they're learning, learning from us and, you know, you know, we teaching them, them or in structure, you know what I mean? Don't do that. Do that. You can't do this then now you can, you know? And, and so what you're saying kind of contradicts that, you know, we want them to think and process, yes, you know, and ways we need the order, order like dunk in the street, right? Right. Other ways we, we need to, you know, well, well, why don't we go in the zone? This we need to let them on them understand it. I love that. I love incorporating yeah. that thought process. So, uh, sister, if somebody wants to find out more about your community, where can they go to find out more information? So our salt, um, the site of Our Lady, the Most Holy Trinity Salt. We have a website. It's easy. It's salt.net. S O L T dot N E T. And that's where you can find more about our. All right, I, I have uh, posted a link for everybody uh, there in in the chat here, and uh, I just just want to say thank thank you for, you know, you know your your work, you know, not only as a relig religious, but you're in, in Catholic education, and, and you know, we had a had a small conversation during our tech or tech yesterday, and. Uh, you, you told me that you worked in Montessori, and you, you remember my first question is, do you do Catechism of the Good Shepherd? And this is all coming organically because, yeah. you know, I have, I have four children, you know, six, five, five, two, and, and nine, nine months. And obviously my oldest this is starting to ask questions about why do we go up, go up to the Eucharist, and she cannot. And so I want to foster that, you know, proper discovery for her. And in the church right now, it's, it can be kind of, uh, you know, hyper, you know, process. Yeah. You do, you do this in grade, you do this, do this, then eight or high school, you go, you get confirmed mm -hmm. and, and not attaching those and those encounters as a parent, parent, I want to figure out how we can do both. And so I'm, I'm very fascinated about how I can take some of those elements yeah. from catechesis to the good shepherd Montessori and, and kind of add them on to some of the work that I'm doing. So I, I, I thank you so much. Yes. For or your 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 knowledge and this all of this this uh, because I think it can can have having effects uh, as as we have seen so uh, sister thank you so much for your your time and we hope to have you on the show again and uh, God bless yeah thank you so much Jesse I really appreciate it I've enjoyed it so thank you.